all of this brings us to the return of John Cena, which was good enough to give SmackDown its biggest TV audience of the year, 2.7 million viewers on Fox. He got a hero's welcome in Boston. And what have I said before? Pay attention to what Michael Cole says, what they have Michael Cole saying on commentary whenever John Cena makes an appearance now. It is a company directive. They are using the greatest of all time tagline for John Cena, and he did it again on Friday. That is their official narrative, that John Cena is the greatest of all time in WWE history. John Cena himself says that Brock Lesnar is the greatest of all time. They would both be wrong. But anyway, Cena says, you know, he, he's passionate about the future of WWE. And so this year, because he's teasing what he's going to do, he says, this year I'm going to do the right thing and I'm not going to go to WrestleMania. I'm going to stay out. I'm going to sit this one out. WrestleMania should go on without John Cena, is what he said. This isn't goodbye, but it's the right thing to do. And he says, WrestleMania spot should be earned, not demanded. Now, I want you to remember that line, okay? WrestleMania spot should be earned, not demanded. Remember that. So he goes to leave. He gives us one final salute, the Marine salute on stage. All of a sudden, out go the lights. And when they come back on, we see John Cena standing there. He's still saluting, although he's got a very concerned look on his face. But the camera pans ever so slightly to the left. And standing, I don't know, five feet, five or six feet maybe behind him in the background is the Fiend. And what does this monster do? What does this monster do? Why, of course, he points to the WrestleMania sign. If I could send a rocket into that sign and blow it up, I would. <laughs> they have the Fiend pointing now at the stupid WrestleMania sign. But that's not even the kicker. We could all laugh about that, how silly it is. The kicker is that after just telling us that WrestleMania matches are earned and not demanded, and how it's the right thing for me to step aside this year, The Fiend comes out, he points to the WrestleMania sign, and John Cena nods his head in approval for a match at WrestleMania. <laughs> what? You cannot make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. <laughs> We've got to make room for the future. Matches are earned. They're not demanded. The Fiend shows up. He demands a WrestleMania match, and John Cena accepts. I actually thought that the camera cutaway looked cool. You know, they, they have a knack for that sort of thing. They've done it before. NXT, remember the first time they did that with Aleister Black and Velveteen Dream? They did something similar. That was incredible. Uh, they did something a few months ago with Keith Lee and Finn Balor. They, they, they've got a knack for these camera shots. But as cool as it looked... I thought that part was well done, but I swear this show is written by nine-year-olds. I know that the show is written for nine-year-olds, and I'm way outside their target age range. I get that. But it's also written by nine-year-olds. Keep in mind that The Fiend did not seem to care about having lost the championship 24 hours earlier. He didn't come out when Goldberg was in the ring. He cares more about a match that he lost to John Cena six years ago. And on Twitter, in response to a fan... Bray said that, you know, in, in explaining why the story makes sense with him and Cena, he said it has to be where it all began. He says it's a circle. Here's the deal. They never should have put the belt on The Fiend in the first place at Hell in a Cell. That is their cardinal mistake that they made, was putting the championship on him. And I said at the time, I loved The Fiend, I loved what they were doing with him at the time, and I said when they made that announcement, came out of nowhere, he, he wrestled one match at that point. That was the win over Finn Balor at SummerSlam. One match he had. And they put him in a championship Hell in a Cell match with that stipulation at the pay-per-view back in October. And I said at the time that they painted themselves into a corner. The moment they announced that match with him and the Monday Night Messiah, they had to put the belt on him, which they did. Albeit it took a few more weeks. They didn't do it on that show. But they never should have rushed to put that championship on him. Someone on my timeline hit the nail on the head. They should have treated the Fiend like they treat Finn Balor's demon. Something that is used sparingly 
And when it is, he's dominant. He destroys his opponent. It's a big gimmick. It gets over. It feels like a big deal. But then you don't see it again for a few months. Keep the Fiend special. Let Bray wrestle most of the matches when he does wrestle. I wouldn't have him on TV every week anyway. But save the Fiend for those big matches where he wears the mask and the whole outfit. And then months down the road, you could belt him at that point. But that was one of their more boneheaded decisions that they made was to rush that title onto him especially seeing how it all ended so now the fiend gets his win back i guess at wrestlemania he gets to avenge the loss that in many ways marked the beginning of the end of bray wyatt at wrestlemania 30 six years later the fiend is going to get his win back over john cena but i think wwe dropped the ball on this roman reigns and bill goldberg does not need a title on the line john cena and the fiend should be for the universal championship the story should have been John Cena comes back. He realizes that, hey, I don't got much time left. I love coming out here and seeing you guys, but I realize I'm closer to the end of my career than I am the beginning of it. You know, my career almost feels like it's winding down. I've had the honor of holding that championship 16 times. I'm using championship, by the way, for all of the belts. The big gold belt, the WWE belt, the universal belt. 16 times, right? He tied an icon in Ric Flair. And now he wants to go to WrestleMania to hold that gold one last time because it means so much to him. There's no bigger prize in the world, but matches are earned and they're not demanded, so I am officially throwing my name into the Elimination Chamber match. And you have John Cena as one of six men in the Chamber match, and he wins, and he gets the match with The Fiend, and you build the match up as John Cena trying for title number 17, which would break... Ric Flair's record that they talk about so much. At the same time, you can have Wyatt bring up their WrestleMania 30 match and how I, I owe you one, right? You know, I've never forgotten about what you did. I've never forgotten about that loss at WrestleMania. And maybe they could even tell the story that his manic personality could be traced all the way back to that match at WrestleMania 30. So both men now have a need to win at WrestleMania. There's so much at stake suddenly here in this match and john cena does not get title number 17 i don't know that john cena is ever going to get title number 17 i've heard that he doesn't even want title number 17 because he doesn't want to break rick flair's record now i don't know how true that is but i've heard that so my plan would not be to have john cena win at wrestlemania you build up the number 17 story but he falls short and the fiend gets a win over him at wrestlemania and Cena puts him over. For all the drama around number 17, he falls short and he puts over the Fiend. That is how you tell that story. Roman and Goldberg is an attraction that can stand on its own. The, you know, the Rock Hogan dynamic from WrestleMania 18, the past against the present. Right? One generation against another. Spear against spear. And when Roman wins, he could chase for the title after that. Give Drew McIntyre his fucking moment. Why does Roman Reigns have to have the moment at WrestleMania? Why does it have to be in Tampa? Can't you give Drew McIntyre his fucking moment to stand alone? Let McIntyre get the championship celebration. Let him get the pyro. Let him get the confetti at WrestleMania this year. Roman can get his coronation another time. Sad tweet of the week also doubles as savage tweet. Or is it sarcastic tweet? It goes to Bray Wyatt. A fan tweeted him about Miz and Morrison losing to the Usos on SmackDown and said, So you booked your brand new tag team champions to lose clean in a non-title match? Are they trying to completely destroy their characters? And Bray, rather timely, responded with one word. Yes. Sarcastic? Or is that how he really feels? Did we see a little bit of that uh, honesty shining through there? on Bray's Twitter. I don't know. But maybe that's the point. 